an impressive actor who did an amazing job. Unfortunately, had to run to Canada at the end of the episode. Dean Blandino, how you doing, brother? <laughs> I'm good. What's up, guys? It's how so are you? Good to have you back. We're doing good. Nice doing hat, good. Dean. <laughs> uh, I'm in my I'm in my lion's colors. Just saying. <laughs> it's they're easier to find this time of year, right? <laughs> Every time it's, I wear this hat, they're like, oh, they're calling me a front runner now. I was like, no, we go back, <laughs> we go back a little bit. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely a history. <laughs> oh man, it's good to have you back. It's it's good. How's how's life been treating you since we talked last, man? It's been, you know, we'll we'll complain about the refs like we always do, because that's part that's the nature of being a Lions fan. But first let's find out how you do, you're doing. How are you feeling? How's everything been for you, man? Yeah, everything's everything's great. I mean, the season's flying, right? It's already yeah you know, college, cause we do college and NFL on Fox. And so heading into week 10 for college week nine for the NFL, it's crazy, but everything's been great. Everybody's family's good and healthy and hope the same for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's going well. I have to, I want to ask really quick, has, has the network been stealing signals from any of the other networks to figure out what angles to put on the broadcast or are you just doing your college coverage like you normally do? We don't, yeah, I don't, I guess there's like a signal stealing controversy involving a school in Michigan. I don't know. I'm not involved in any of that. I, uh, I kind of, I'm above board. I've seen my, I've seen my share of, of gates over the year, right? Spy <laughs> gate, late gate, this one sign stealing gate. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> were you, were you, you were still the VP of officiating for deflate gate, weren't you? Were you there for that? Uh, yes. Yes. For deflate it, I was. Yeah. Uh, can you just, do you mind just walking us through from, yeah. I'm not asking for in, inter, extra, anything, you know, special information, but right. what was it like? Walk through that from the inside the, the the league and how that played out. Cause that, that just had to be surreal. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. I, I, you know, there had been some talk it look in league circles. It, it wasn't a secret that, certain court quarterbacks like the football the way they like the football, right? Some might mm -hmm. like it less, you know, less air, some like it a little more. Um, as long as it's in that that legal range uh, between 13 and 14, uh, the, the PSI. And so there have been, you know, always chatter about Brady and, and, and the footballs, and it just kind of ramped up after they had just beat the Ravens the week before. They're going to play Indianapolis in the championship game, and uh, it kind of ramped up. So – we were aware that there, there could be an issue. The officials went through their normal protocol and it just, it just exploded after once it got out into the media and then, you know, it just took on a life of its own. And obviously, you know, how many years did it take before it, it was, uh, you know, finalized? It was, it was very interesting. There was a lot of, you know, they brought in a third party group and I was, I was, brought in and deposed like i was part of a, a trial it, it was crazy <laughs> that had to be fun i mean oh. the things you learn right like you just try to go to work every day and all of a sudden you're, you're in a deposition it's like huh how, how did the record scratch yeah. you might wonder how i got here right <laughs> exactly <laughs> um good question coming uh ask dean about the xfl usfl merger and how uh, how you're going to be involved yeah, you know, we're excited. Uh, spring football, I think it, it was clear that in order for spring football to survive and have long-term sustainability, there needs to be one league, and having competing leagues was, was going to be uh, probably detrimental to both. And so we're excited. Um, you know, I think they're still working out the legal part of it and, and creating this new league and this new company. Uh, but I, you know, I'm, I'm going to be a part of it. And, you know, I, I imagine my role will be somewhat similar to what I did in the XFL. And we're hoping to kick off in the spring and, uh, and excited, you know, excited to have, you know, more spring football, more opportunities for, for players uh, that can, that can, you know, get on NFL rosters and stick on NFL rosters and officials and coaches and everybody else. So we're excited about it. Yeah. So the officiating, officiating development, um, can you talk about that a little bit? Like, I think it's great that these guys are getting reps and is it a viable pipeline to becoming either a top level college official? Cause I would guess that's probably going to pay more than the, the new league or an NFL official. It is, it is. And, and, and we, we talk about full-time officiating a lot, especially when there's, when there's calls and, and we feel like the officiating isn't up to par and I think this this kind of creates that environment where officials can work 
most of the year and and they can get better and so these officials will be top college officials in the spring and uh, and there might even be an opportunity for for less experienced NFL officials maybe it's an official in the NFL who who they they're thinking of making a head referee so i think there's an opportunity there as well so this is great this is part of the development and it just gives the officials more opportunities. And, and it's kind of a year-round thing now. And I talked to pl- uh, a couple of officials that worked in the XFL, USFL last year. And they said it was the first time they had worked that long. And they they said they, they're they better now because yeah, of it. Yeah. Any thought, yeah. I'll just put this out here as a thought process. I know it's, it's, it's probably not going to get legs. But the whole idea of like relegation of officials as, as like you, I, I'll, I'll put a name out there and, and this isn't you speaking at all i don't want to put this in your face but like, like a cleat blakeman i could see hey let, let's get cleat back to the xfl we'll, we'll get like the top <laughs> officiating team from the xfl we'll bring them into the nfl and we'll we'll, we'll we'll see some improvement on on what's going on any thoughts on that kind of like movement well between you know we have teams? yeah we have had i mean we we let go i let go of officials earlier in their career and the league does have and there's a, there's a collective bargaining agreement with the officials union, just like with the players. Right, and right. part of that agreement, in the first three years, if the official just isn't cutting it, because you just don't know. Look, think about all the draft picks, right? The first round draft picks that don't pan out. They're great players in college. They just don't pan out in the NFL. It's the same with officials. They're a great college official, and they just don't make that transition. So in the first three years, the league can let them go, and uh, and they can go back to college and, and get better. So So you have part of that. Um, I would love. I heard you guys, you know, I, when I, before I, I jumped on, just talking about um, the worst team in the league. Imagine the league had relegation like they right. do in, in in soccer in England, yeah, and yeah. and you yeah. really had to. I mean, think about it. you couldn't tank because if you it would get rid of tanking because you could, uh, you know, you could end up in a lesser league and there's financial ramifications. I think that whole process and system is fascinating. Do you know how many B tier championships the Lions would have had? That could have been incredible. Oh yeah, the Lions! Oh my God, the Lions would dominate the lesser league. They Mo- tro- trophies. <laughs> you want champs, champs every year? <laughs> half the half the dang field would be trophy cases, like three rings of honor. Right? It'd have been incredible, boy. Uh, <laughs> history, it hurts. Um, it does. I want to ask really quick, and if there's anything you can give us, or anything you know, even at this point, with the two leagues combining. And 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 I, and I say it, and it's not just because you're here. I've said it when you weren't here too. I absolutely love what you've been able to do with with kind of the whole clay and molding how the officiating was working. I mean, the 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 camera, hearing the the replay officials, hearing them talk through that kind of that kind of transparency is is fantastic, and especially as you know, sports gambling becomes more part of you know the world and, and it's part and. The apps right here right you know and we all take i don't say we all but many of us take part it's part of the the world we live in and it adds a lot a, a whole element of fun to to the game itself but boy that transparency means a lot when you start looking at these things and it just gives so much credibility to what's going on any changes with the combination of the leagues that you can speak to or anything you've kind of heard like whistles about in the nfl about any more transparency on, on those things going on in the booth well, we in the it, for the combined league, we want to continue what we're doing, right? And we want that, that transparency for all the reasons you, you just said, right? The credibility it, it, with the as 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 sports gambling and betting and that that becomes more prevalent. Um, it's important that the integrity of the process and when you can listen and watch. Um, there's no you may not agree with the ultimate outcome, but mm-hmm. but you're you're not there there are these conspiracy theories and it's something nefarious and there's other things going on. They kind of go away. And usually it's it's my experience with what we did in the XFL was that the narrative changed. It was pretty positive about officiating. And that that's not normal, as, as you guys know. So I think we're going to continue that, build on it. Uh, and I hope the NFL can can bring more transparency into that process. I don't know in the in the near future if they're going to let, you know, peel the 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 completely back and let everybody hear and listen to everything. But I think there's an opportunity to do a little bit more. And I think that'll help. I think it'll, it'll change some of the narrative around officiating. 
Yeah, yeah. All right, here for St. Jude, folks. Uh, Dean's joining us because he supports the research they do, the f- supporting the families and the kids through everything. They never pay a dime. Go to stjude.org slash DLP. Toss a couple bucks. You got a few dollars in your pocket. Toss it over. Everything helps. Goal of $50,000. Get us to a total of one hundred fifty k raised so far. Um, we're trying to get really quick. As, or as soon as we can, we have a, a gentleman in Australia who got a tattoo uh, about two years ago, three years ago, when we did this, that said "Staff Daddy" uh, on his chest. <laughs> <laughs> if we get to twenty five thousand dollars, he's going to underneath that, he's going to get a tattoo uh, of Goff Father. <laughs> so, uh, oh, wow. and we're going to get it. We're going to that have is live. that is dedication. That's yeah. dedication. He's going to do it live on the show. That's, so we're that's fandom right there. We have an appointment set up. We have it all. So we just need to get to the money. But, and the name, the names are great, right? Staff Daddy, Godfather. I mean, I don't – who's the next? We got to think – I'm always thinking ahead three, four years from now. We got to have a quarterback with a name that lends itself to, like, this whole this whole theme. Yeah. The, the, so the worry is that it's Hendon Hooker. Because- yeah, Hendon Hooker <laughs> is our – Okay, there's a lot of possibilities there. A lot of possibilities. You can do a lot with that. Yes. <laughs> All right. So people in the chat are, are asking about it already, and I, I promised earlier that I would ask it of you. So I have been around football for a very long time. I'm not sure I have ever seen a referee wave off an umpire's holding call. That happened in the game. Cleve Blakeman did it. Can you explain any rationale of how or why that would happen? Because I've never seen it, and I know um, the guys who run football zebras that I, I had a conversation with them. They're like that. I don't know why that happened. Can you offer any insight yeah, on how that be, like, the process behind it? Yeah, it, it's unusual because the way the mechanics are, the referee and the umpire really should be. They shouldn't be focusing in the same place, right? The referee is on the, is on the right side. Uh, of the quarterback, the umpire's on on the left side of the quarterback. The referee would take the right side of the offensive line on a pass play and 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 look at the blocking by the right tackle and the and the guard and the umpire would take the other side. So, and it's possible that that as the play developed and and so where their their areas of focus were, they kind of converged and and maybe the the referee saw the same action that the umpire saw. So it's not completely crazy, but it is unusual for. Uh, an umpire to have an offensive holding call on the referee to take him off. Um, it's just, you know, it's one of those things. Typically, you'll see that more downfield. One official sees it from one one angle, throws a flag for pass interference. Another official comes in and picks it up, not to bring up a sore subject. It might have happened in a playoff game with the Lions involved a couple of years ago. But it, uh, you know... It's and I know kind of you know, this is this this theme of I, I can tell you this, and I always say, look, I we, we got to be careful about mistaking. And I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that anyone is incompetent, but sometimes people just make mistakes and it's not, yeah. it's, it's not right. sinister. It's not like we're out to get you. We just made a mistake and I've made them and every, and, and it just happens. Yeah. That, that's okay. perfectly fair. Perfectly and fair. So we do make mistakes. I, I, I accept that. I a hundred percent accept that. And I'm, and, I'm, and there's not a, but here, but, <laughs> I have a question that I've been, I wanted to ask about that again, not saying there's a conspiracy, but it's a, it's a how question. And it goes back to the first game of the season, opening game for the NFL against the chiefs. You have a right tackle lining up as a fullback effectively for the entirety of the game. Even at halftime, you would expect New York would call and say, Hey guys, um, not only is he going for a walk before the ball snapped, but he's behind the quarterback, right? At this point, they have to have noticed. Somebody, every the, the announcers on TV, know, everybody knew, except for some reason the refs, and it happened for the entirety of the game. Again, it, that's I, I, I hate to use the word because I, I, I don't want to be pejorative, but it does scream incompetence, right? That nobody on the crew for the entirety of the game saw that, yet everybody else did. Now, I say that I talk about it from a lion's perspective. Why wouldn't you complain? Because where he was lining up gave up run pass every time it, it gave it. So if I'm the coach and I'm like, and I can see this tendency, you know, don't say anything because that gives me a whole lot of help on, on how I'm running my defense. But how does that happen? Just, just help me with yeah. that. Yeah. 
I, it, it's just, it was a head scratcher, certainly, because it wasn't, that's basic, that, that's not something complicated, that's not, that's not a, a bang, bang judgment call on a, on a 30 yard pass, and it happened right. so quickly, that, that's just, you know, lining up properly, and, and, and there's mechanics in place that the first time the, the, the tackle is pushing the envelope, you, you warn them, you warn the coach, and you say next time it's going to be a flag, and then you flag, you flag them, and then they correct it. That that's ninety nine percent of the time. Yeah, yeah. That that's what happens. And for some reason, and I don't know if it was a a subconscious thing where oh, okay, it's the first game, and we don't want it to be about the officiating, and we don't want to throw a bunch of flags or yeah. though. But it just felt it was bizarre because it wasn't like you said. It was it was clear. The broadcast, they were talking about it. So at some point, you got to say, hey, guys, he's not lining up properly. You you have to correct that. And uh, and I think at that point, though, as, as it gets later in the game, if you've allowed it all game and then and then call it on a on a critical third down play and late in the fourth quarter, then you're happens. not doing your job either there. Right. It's just like you want that consistency. So if you've been letting it go, but the key is you can't let it go. You have to catch it early. And you correct it, and the players correct it, and everybody moves on. So it was, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it was, was a happy ending for Lions fans because they won the game, but uh, I, I don't know. And in the end, at a crucial time, they did call it, right? And and if I'm a Chiefs fan, I'm I'm really frustrated by that, by both my team's incompetence in doing that, right? And and I don't mean, I, I, again, I don't mean it in a super mean way. I just don't have another word right now. But what the heck sure, am I doing if we're doing this, right? Because I at any point, I could get called for this. And I don't find, but by then it happens at the end of the game and it co- potentially costs them the opportunity for that win. Really, really tough for them. The other thing that happened in that game, and it's 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 throughout the NFL. This isn't me in my in my Lions hat, but this is this is now just kind of as of you know, kind of watching the officiating. There's two things that I've seen a lot more, it seems like, this year than I have years past that are just kind of being let fly. And that's the pre motion or pre-snap motion by linemen like the, 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 and and holding and and it it's really i mean i can i can pick Aiden Hutchinson because we watch every snap of every game of the Detroit Lions when the Lions are on our own we're watching other games and i see a lot of holding going you know going on there that's pretty egregious and then i see some really like what are we calling here like kind of holding calls as well yeah. um holding is super inconsistent this year but the the motion pre snap by Lyman too has been has been really inconsistent. Is it they're just not going to emphasize it? Is it one of those things? Because we've talked about this a number of times. How athletic and how good the defensive linemen have become compared yeah. to what the and put such a difficult job for the offensive linemen. Is it giving them a little bit of a, a leeway to allow the competition level to be equalized a little bit? I'm, I'm just, you know, I don't want to answer for you. Sure. I, I think all, all of those are fair points. I do think they're, they have been more liberal officiating the line of scrimmage in the last probably two to three years. I, I don't think they've been officiating the line of scrimmage to, to where the rule is. I think they're letting more go. Um, the concern with that is like we do end up, you end up, okay, if I'm going to get away with it, I'm going to keep doing it. And then everybody's doing it. And it's really hard to put that genie back in the bottle. Right. right. And, then, and then you say, okay, we're going to, we're going to emphasize it. And you go from all year, there's, you know, we're not calling line of scrimmage fouls or we're calling one a game. And then, and then week 12 comes along and we have six a game and it's right. like, what the heck just happened? So you have to be mindful of that. It's that balance um, you know, holding, I think also it's, it, it is a difficult play to officiate because there's so much, and we always, right, you could call a hold on every play. I don't think that's necessarily true, but there's so much opportunity for holding with offensive and defensive linemen because so much of the blocking is outside the frame right. and there is a lot of grabbing, but, you know, it has to raise the level. Okay, does the defender, does he beat the offensive player's feet? Is now there a restriction? Does it have an effect on the play? Is it at the point of attack? Is it on the backside? All these things you have to consider. But I do feel if you look at the holding numbers from year to year, the last couple of years, it looks like a roller coaster. Like we're up, we're down, we're up, we're down. And we're trying to find, I feel like we're trying to find that sweet spot and and we're struggling a little bit. So so I think that's something the league, you know, has to continue to look at. Go ahead, Luis. So, uh, there's been a lot of talk about like the eye in the sky sort of thing. And, and you guys kind of dabbled with that. Is that something that the NFL would ever seriously consider doing? You know, there, there's more replay now than ever. They're they're yeah. getting more help from replay. 
Um, they're looking at things like ineligibles downfield. If the officials throw the flag and replay sees that the lineman was not more than a yard, they're communicating that. So I think we're heading in that direction. Uh, I don't know if if we're if we're going to go back to reviewing pass interference like we did in 2019. That didn't really work out. I think you can do it. Um, we did it in the XFL for 43 games. We let the coaches challenge. We let them have one challenge, and they could challenge anything, whatever they wanted, one time. And uh, and it was a learning experience for me. And there were probably a couple that that I would have liked to have back, but. Uh, you know, at least we gave the coaches an opportunity for to, to correct something or at least for us to get a second look at it. And I think you can do it. I, I think you've got to, again, maintain the balance of allowing the game to flow and because momentum is so big, right? You've got, you've got a, a defense that's on their heels and they're tired and you're driving and you want to go fast and, and then we're stopping the game every other play to look at officiating decisions. I don't think that's great for the game either, but I think there are big calls that happen in every game that you'd love an opportunity to uh, to get right and a second chance to look at it. So I think that that's something the league has to continue to, to look at. Yeah. I think in the holding space, and I've articulated this before, you're right. There, uh, you know, it's an, it's a trope that there's holding every play. It, it's it, That's not the case. I think a lot of people aren't quite aware of what holding truly is, but there's a lot of holding that doesn't go called. And now this year sure. we're saying, okay, the roller coaster's at the bottom of the hill as far as the, the penalty flags. We don't want a penalty flag every play either. It feels like, like a, turning it from a 10-yard penalty to a 5-yard penalty kind of then puts the penalty for it in line with how – likely it is to be called right because it seems like sometimes yeah. it just pops out of nowhere and it's like really that was a hold after what we saw over here that seems really goofy if it's just five yards it's a lot less of an egregious penalty and it just kind of fits with a little bit of the flexy kind of subjective space that that sits in there's my yeah and that's the, take it yeah the, the evolution the evolution of the rule holding used to be a 15 yard penalty yeah. and that was that 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 just crushed the offense right you yep. you're you're first in 25 or second in 25 your your chances of, of getting a first down go go so they're so low so that's been the evolution of the rule make it a 10 yard penalty i don't know if they would ever consider five but but it is worth again that that conversation because you don't want a a kind of a marginal call to put the offense in a hole and now they, they can't get out of it. Right. And th- but then it also gives them flexibility to go up and down with the call. You still get the stoppage of play if you have a, a, a year with a lot of calls on it, but the, the, the impediment is so much less. Um, Richard Swears, thank you for the 50 bucks for St. Jude. Uh, St. Jude.org slash DLP. Get your money in there and, and uh, help raise some money for some sick kids and their families. Um, I want to ask you a question. This came in in the chat from Eric Manish, who's, Great longtime listener. You may have met him when you came to our our uh, training camp party. All other businesses are using AI to augment things and make people better at their jobs and use left effort. Do you think that there's room for AI in, the, in officiating? And then have you guys, are there any kind of experiments or anything you've been running thus far on how you may use AI in the, in the work they're doing? Well, I'm, I'm sure there, there's as as this technology continues to develop. I think the legal look at that. We, you know, my, me personally, in, in my time at the NFL or 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 with the spring leagues, we haven't really looked at AI that closely. You know, you're looking more at um, tracking, right? Ball tracking. Can we GPS? Can we locate the football? Can we locate you know that moment in time when the knee is down? So so that that technology continues to be uh, you know explored. Uh, with with AI, I you know I don't know. I'm sure as you know, I see these amazing things and um, that people are doing with AI. Um, I don't know if we ever you know the part of officiating that people don't. I guess I'm not saying they don't understand, but but maybe it gets lost sometimes. Is the 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 good officials and especially the good referees, they're game managers, right? They're, yeah. they're, they're not, they might not get every call right, but they're going to manage the game. They're going to keep the game moving. They're going to communicate with the coaches. And though, though it's about managing the game first. And then that for that, like, I really feel like, you know, you can't, that has to be a, a human being. That has to be somebody that can communicate. And, uh, and, you know, maybe there's an opportunity in replay for AI. I don't know. I just, Right now, I just use it to like, hey, draw me a picture of me and in, 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 in doing this on a mountain, and, and they give me a picture, and that's cool. Yeah, that's fun stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that, that gets discussed a lot, and I'm sure you've answered this before, but 
pass interference on the defense, spot foul versus capping it at 15 yards. Is that anything that's realistic? And how would you feel about that? For me, you know, I, I like the NFL rule. I like the spot foul. I think that the, the Okay. The theory with the spot foul is if you went to 15, I think 15 works for college. Um, but when you get to the NFL and these defensive backs, these are the best of the best. And, and, and now if you, if you tell them, okay, the worst you can do is 15, they're going to play more aggressive and they're gonna, there's going to be more contact. And so you, you impact a deep passing game. You make it harder to officiate uh, because more contact is just harder to officiate. Uh, in general. So, so I like the spot foul. I know sometimes there are calls that, you know, it's 30 yards downfield and it's really not, it's kind of marginal and, and you hate to see those. But I do think that in the NFL, if you went to just the 15, we'd see more grabbing and clutching and, and we'd see more just straight up, I'm beat. I'm going to tackle this guy and uh, and the best they're going to do is 15 versus now, you know, you, you, you're giving up a 40 yard play if you do that. So, uh, so I like the NFL rule. I like the college rule for the college, that level of play. And uh, so I don't think the NFL is, it's, it's usually somebody always brings it up, but I don't think they're, they're close to making any changes there. It makes sense. I mean, as much as I, as I dislike Aaron Rodgers unique ability to draw those kind of penalties when he, when he's toes you know inches away from being sacked the the advantage that the defensive linemen have to put those quarterbacks under pressure if you gave that kind of an advantage to the to the cornerbacks there just would be no offense anymore it, it, it seems like it would just cap score that's always the concern yeah, yeah that's the concern yeah uh okay question for dean from the chat is there any emphasis on calling certain penalties early holding illegal contact etc so that the players know what will be called sort of like establishing the strike zone in baseball yeah i think you you certainly want to establish that strike zone for for a lot of that what we talk about with officials is more uh like game control if a game is starting to get out of control you want to make sure you can you know because you can only break up so many you know, so many pushing and shoving matches, right? You, it doesn't, it doesn't decentivize anyone if you just keep breaking them up or even offsetting penalties because nobody, nobody really is affected there. So, if there's an opportunity to get a flag down, a, a personal foul, 15 yards on one team, you know, you're not making something up, but it's there. You want to get that. Um, I do think officials do a lot of they call it preventative officiating, and so you'll you know if the if the left tackle and, and I'll use you know Hutchinson as an example if he's running the and the tackle you know kind of it's close it's borderline but it's not quite holding they'll talk to him and say hey you were pretty close you know you know next time that's going to be a flag those types of things so you want to try to make sure the players understand where the line is sure. and that's happening throughout the game there there's certainly communication and then it's on the officials to call it the same way throughout the game and then that's that's a challenge as well yeah let me ask you um i know you've been uh you know you grew up in the area and and just growing up somewhere that's kind of those things happen um i have a really good friend who also is a giants fan um this year has has it hurt you at all (laughs) you know it's interesting i i you know i'm i grew up a giants fan i obviously my my fan affiliation it kind of wanes when you get into officiating and you get and so yeah. so coming away uh, so I'm still a Giants fan I still would like them to do well but it's not it's my my kids my 13 year old and my eight year old they're going through they're big Giants fans and it was after the uh, I think it might have been I forget what game it was and my eight year old said I'm dad let me see the standings I'm looking for a new team you know the, 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 <laughs> The thirteen-year-old, he's he's there. He's got his Saquon jersey. He's he's still he was he was gutted gutted with that Jets loss. Uh, but I think my eight-year-old is he's you know he's looking and I and I did suggest the Lions. So we it's, might have another the Lions. You got the Blues. We I might know have you're just Lions. You're, you're actually yes. borrowing his hat. I know that. For, for yes, but he seems a little flaky, <laughs> so he might jump off the Lions bandwagon too. <laughs> Well, you can jump between two. It's okay. Lions in New York. Yeah. It seems like they they ebb and flow in the on the in the inverse side. So that's all right. Um, all right. So what I do you have coming up, Dean? Side. What do you what do you what do you have <laughs> coming up uh, in in the near future? Where are we going to see Dean running around? So yeah, tomorrow we've got a full slate of college football on Fox Sports FS1. A lot of uh, I think a lot of Big Twelve tomorrow. 
um, some Pac-12 games. So we'll be doing all 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 day. I'll be in the studio, and then uh, and then Sunday, and the big game, the big game that we have Sunday is Cowboys Eagles. So um, looking forward to that one. And and so yeah, I'll be I'll be in the studio all weekend and and watching football and and coming on the air and then checking my my Twitter or my X or whatever they call it and listening, you know, reading people throw shade at me and it's all good. That's awesome. Could you just wear like a lion's pin on your tie or something like just a little blue dot or something, just a signal for lions fans. Let them know. Hey, look, it's real. I'm, I'm the, a lion's the lion. It's been good. The lions fans. And maybe it's because, you know, we're winning and then we've, you know, we got a, you know, winning the division. And, and so the lions fans have been less feisty with the officiating. So we'll yeah. see. Well, it's it's thanks to all of your outreach and your hard work, Dean, and the fact that you know you have have now joined the stew of Lions fans to to, to celebrate the team, right? <laughs> appreciate you, man. Thanks again for supporting us, being on the show. You've been you've been awesome, start to finish, man. Appreciate everything except that picked up flag in Dallas. Otherwise, yeah. you know it's been <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for having me love you guys and uh stay hydrated and and you know a lot of a lot of caffeine and stay uh yep. get through the rest of the get, get through the rest of the marathon yeah you got it brother thank you again with dean thanks, love you, Dean. Uh, and be good all right thank you, See you guys dean blandino